Hello everyone in the cyberspace of Pfizer 2020 and thank you all for being here today for this presentation. I am Zaharula Papamichio and with my colleague Mikhailis Yanakos and with a contribution and long-term expertise in the field from Simon and Andrew Lufton Riley, we conducted a study to map the landscape of the computing education research field up to date based on the analysis of the metadata of the published papers and today I will present the findings. To begin with, the numbers of submissions to ITICSI and the SIXI Technical Symposium provide sufficient evidence that computing education research as a field is growing in popularity as they have more than doubled over the past 20 years and the number of publications concerning introductory programming in particular has tripled over the period from 2003 to 2017. Thus, the question is, is computing education research turning into a mature and respectable field? Over the, the past 15 years, more than 1,200 peer-reviewed full and short papers were published in ICER, ITICSI, and ITICSI Working Group reports. Previous attempts to understand the landscape of computing education research relied on human examination of the papers by employing methods such as systematic reviews or assessing the content of the papers based on human-defined classification schemas. Here we are interested in the automatic and semi-automatic classification of the publications based on a process that entails no examination of the papers themselves. Our contribution is this. We saw explicitly the state of the subtopics and thematic areas that computing education research has brought into the spotlight and among them, we define the relative position of the topics that have attracted increased attention and have been well studied, the topics that have peripheral or supportive contribution, and the topics that are emerging or declining. We arrived to these conclusions using measurements and analyzing data from previous publications. To perform the mapping of the field, we applied cohort analysis. Cohort analysis rests in the assumption that key terms identified within an article can adequately describe and communicate the content of the article. Furthermore, the co-occurrence of at least two key terms in the same article indicates a linkage between those topics. It indicates a theme. Cohort analysis is applied to reduce the broad network of key terms into a smaller network of related topics using graph theory. To share a common understanding of how this is achieved, please allow me to engage you in the key terminology. First, centrality refers to how many other um, nodes a node connects to, and in a way aims to quantify the importance of a particular node, and in our case a cluster, within a network. And for this purpose, we use metrics such as between centrality or degree centrality or closing centrality and so forth. Furthermore, density refers to how cohesive is the cluster of terms, which means the number of direct ties observed for the cluster divided by the maximum number of possible ones. Combining uh, centrality and density creates a space within which all clusters can be located in relative positions. This space is the strategic diagram. The position of a cluster in the diagram corresponds to the importance of the cluster in the whole network, which means its centrality, in relation to how well the theme of this cluster is developed, which means its density. Having said that, now I will present how we put this method in practice. Firstly, the author assigned keywords were manually pre-processed and standardized by merging singular and plural forms of nouns and words that convey similar meanings, such as, for example, computing education and IT education. At the end of this phase, slightly more than 2,800 keywords were uh, identified as unique ones and were retained for further analysis. To extract the key phrases from abstracts, we used a Python implementation of the text rank algorithm for text summarization, and we requested the top 15 phrases. 
After manually removing phrases that carry little semantic significance, such as, for instance, general goal or contribution, we were left with about 6,300 key phrases, and we repeated the same pre-processing as we did for the author assigned keywords. Then we ended up with almost 4,100 key phrases identified as, key, as unique ones. Of those um, unique machine extracted key phrases, there were 94 that occurred in at least six papers, covering almost 80% of the whole papers. Next, we performed hierarchical clustering analysis on a correlation matrix with the retained terms, and it resulted in 14 clusters, each representing a research theme or a subfield. For the author assigned keywords, we adopted a different approach. Two researchers with many years of experience in computing education literature manually grouped the keywords into related things. We merged different keywords that represent the same concept as we did for the machine extracted phrases, and also we grouped the distinct but related terms, such as, for example, academic integrity with plagiarism and cheating. This grouping uh, uh, is subjective and thus uh, it was carried out by consensus. The author assigned keywords were grouped into 23 distinct clusters. Finally, from both the human generated and machine generated lists, we generated key term network graphs and we computed the core periphery structure of both the networks. Uh, the results from uh, this analysis are as follows. Uh, firstly, from the cohort analysis of the machine extracted key phrases, the strategic diagram shows the relative positions of the 14 clusters within the overall field. It can be seen that the field has two mainstream research themes represented by clusters 2 and 11 and corresponding to introductory programming courses and games. There are also uh, some internally well-structured but isolated research themes, and those are represented uh, by the classes related to algorithm visualization, software development, software engineering, as well as to dropout. Emerging or disappearing topics were also detected and are shown in quadrant three, such as, for instance, programming languages, CIS curriculum, and cognitive skills. Uh, a relatively high number of basic and transversal themes were detected, such as, for instance, computational thinking, novice programmers, errors, and assessment, with the topics in cluster 9, which are related to computational thinking, being very close to quadrant 1. On the other hand, as uh, we already explained, the author assigned keywords were grouped by the two experienced computing education researchers. The strongest um, cluster comprises generic terms, such as uh, computing education, computer science education, and education. Another cluster that is both strong and large is introductory programming, which includes terms such as CS1, knowledge programmers, and introductory programming course. There are also several moderately strong clusters, such as um, computational thinking, computing disciplines, educational data, pedagogy, and programming. The remaining, the remaining clusters are relatively weak, although some of them are quite large, such as, for instance, the cluster with the general uh, ungroupable terms. We also performed a core periphery analysis to create a granular network map of uh, the key terms. Uh, here, we display the results in which each node in the graph represents a key term, that is linked to other key terms that appear on the same paper. We can see that um, the term introductory programming courses dominates the machine extracted phrases, while topics such as assessment or software development and exams are also identified as significant. Regarding the author assigned keywords, the topics that were identified as significant are the specific courses or topics, the learning approaches, aspects of programming, uh, programming languages and environments. And comparing the two mm, network, keyword networks, we see that while introductory programming dominates the machine extracted keywords, it is also um, central and very popular 
in the author, uh, author um, group uh, keywords. Bringing all these uh, findings on the same page, one can say that the field is fragmented as only a few topics have been motor that is mature enough to lead the field. In particular, from the analysis of the machine extracted phrases, some of the thematic areas have reached a relatively high level of maturation and centrality in the field, although some areas were not found to be as mature as one would expect for instance, uh, algorithm visualization. On the other hand, the strongest cluster uh, defined by the human expert was the um, computing education cluster, comprising generic keywords that relate to education. We see the differences between human text annotations and machine text mining results with uh, the human authors using terms to describe their, word, uh, their work in a more abstract and generic fashion having in mind all the details of their work and introducing some kind of subjective bias. Whereas what is found in the abstracts provides a more objective glance to what one expects to read in the paper, yet it is context unaware. So overall, to conclude, a recommendation for authors is that they need to devote more time and consideration when they are choosing keywords and writing their abstracts to describe their work. Thank you for your attention.